demonstrating loyalty and receiving betrayal in return is certainly a terrible thing. This dynamic essentially marked the story of a man named Uriah in the Bible. And the worst part is that the betrayal Uriah suffered came from someone who was very sensitive to the Word of God. Someone who was deeply concerned about living according to the Lord's precepts. Someone who is described in the Bible as a man after God's own heart. We are, obviously, talking about King David. Being betrayed by an ungodly person is certainly very painful, but being betrayed by a God-fearing person is even worse. David's story is emblematic, encompassing many achievements, accomplishments, and blessings. After all, it's the story of the most important king of the Israelite monarchy, the primary writer of the Book of Psalms, and the ancestor of Lord Jesus himself. However, there's also a dark chapter in this story. All of David's great achievements, no matter how significant, could never overshadow his mistake with Uriah. Therefore, when discussing Uriah's story, one cannot help but think of the fall of a man of God. And in this video, you will understand everything the Bible says about who Uriah was. Uriah was a Hittite who held a position in King David's army. The name Uriah essentially means, My light is Yahweh. This name was common in biblical times and designates at least four biblical characters, including the high priest during the reign of Ahaz in Isaiah's time, a prophet faithful to the Lord contemporary with Jeremiah, and a priest from the post-exile period. The Uriah we are discussing was known as a Hittite, also referred to as a Heathite in biblical literature. For those unaware, the Hittites were an Indo-European people who established an empire in central Anatolia, present-day Turkey, around 2000 BC. However, the identity of the Hittites mentioned in the Bible is much debated. Considering the period and historical context of the biblical passages where these people are mentioned, there are different interpretations about the biblical Hittites. The main interpretations suggest that they were either Hittite people who migrated to the Canaan region and its nearby territories at some point, or inhabitants of the northern Syrian kingdoms during the first millennium BC, typically referred to as Neo-Hittites. In Uriah's specific case, he was most likely a Neo-Hittite from Syria. We know that the core of David's army consisted of foreign mercenary troops. Either way, the biblical narrative makes it clear that Uriah was a foreigner. However, Uriah lived in Jerusalem, and considering the meaning of his name and his conduct, it seems plausible to suggest that he had adopted the Hebrew religion. Some commentators even see in Uriah's behavior a certain concern for observing the Feast of Tabernacles. Uriah was married to a woman named Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam and granddaughter of Ahithophel, the Gilanite. The Bible provides no specific details about the relationship between Uriah and Bathsheba. Uriah's prominence in the scriptures is mainly due to the episode of David's adultery with Bathsheba, who was his wife at the time. The Bible records that Uriah's tragedy began when he was away from home. The biblical text informs us that Uriah was at war against the Ammonites when the Israelite troops were attacking the Ammonite capital, Rabbah, under Joab's command. King David, who was not at war, saw a beautiful woman bathing from the terrace of his palace one afternoon. At first he didn't know who she was, but he was quickly informed that she was Uriah's wife. Nevertheless, David wasn't deterred by the fact that Bathsheba was a married woman and ordered his messengers to bring her to him. This was the king's command, and Bathsheba likely had no choice but to comply. She went to David, had a relationship with him, and then returned to her home. Later, Bathsheba discovered she was pregnant. Since Uriah was camped with the Israelite troops, the child obviously couldn't be his. So Uriah's wife informed David about the pregnancy, and that's when the king of Israel began his terrible scheme. First, he ordered Joab to send Uriah from Rabbah to Jerusalem. David's idea was to have Uriah return home and be with Bathsheba, 
making it possible for her pregnancy to be justified to Uriah. However, David didn't anticipate Uriah's persistence and loyalty. Upon arriving in Jerusalem, Uriah met with David, who pretended to inquire about the battle. Afterward, David ordered Uriah to go home and rest, then sent him a gift from the royal table. But instead of going home, Uriah chose to sleep at the palace gate with the king's servants. David was informed that Uriah had stayed at the palace and questioned him about why he hadn't gone home. Uriah's response to David revealed the depth of his loyalty. In 2 Samuel 11.11, he stated that he would never go to the comfort of his home, while the ark, Israel, and Judah were in tents and his comrades were camped on the battlefield. The next day, David invited Uriah to a banquet, hoping to get him drunk. However, Uriah still didn't go home and chose to sleep at the palace gate to maintain his post as a soldier. Realizing he couldn't get Uriah to be with Bathsheba, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. This loyal soldier had no idea he was delivering his own death sentence, as David's letter ordered Joab to place Uriah at the front of the fiercest battle and have the Israelite troops abandon him so he would be wounded and killed. David's plan worked, Joab followed his instructions, and Uriah died in battle. In Jerusalem, upon hearing of her husband's death, Bathsheba mourned. But after her mourning period ended, David had her brought to the palace, and she became one of the king of Israel's wives. Uriah died without knowing he had been betrayed by the king, to whom he had sworn loyalty and that his wife was pregnant with another man's child. He died unsuspecting that he was the victim of a God-fearing man who had allowed his heart to be dominated by sin. David, on the other hand, thought his sin would remain hidden forever. Bathsheba even gave birth to the child she was expecting from David. However, while David had managed to hide his sin from Uriah and others, he couldn't hide it from God. It seems the king of Israel had forgotten that nothing is hidden from the Lord's eyes. The Bible recounts that the Lord sent the prophet Nathan to confront David because of his grievous sin against Uriah. Through the prophet, God reminded David of how he had chosen him as king, delivered him from his enemies, and greatly blessed him. Yet despite all this, David had done evil. God then announced to David that just as he had struck Uriah with the sword and taken his wife, the sword would not depart from his house and his wives would also be taken by another man. And none of this would happen in secret, as David had tried to do, but openly before all of Israel. Soon after the Lord's rebuke came upon David, his first child with Bathsheba fell ill and died. Afterward, the sequence of David's family history was marked by tragedies, and at one point, one of his own sons, Absalom, took his wives in front of the people of Israel, just as the prophet Nathan had foretold. This sad story involving Uriah further proves that, apart from God's grace, no one is truly good and righteous enough to deserve divine favor on their own merits. Now please write in the comments if you were already familiar with who Uriah was in the Bible.